A quick jump up an obscure fire ladder on the adjacent three-story high-rise, I scrambled to the top of the building and out of Quinn's direction of pursuit. We locked eyes, if you can call them that. Empty pits, cold and pitiless. But I could see something else, deeper in them. Something out of character for the cool, calm, and collected Quinn I served with. Desperation. So, there's more to this hunt than protecting his reputation and ego. He's being pushed, the carrots being dangled. I imagine the chief's position, maybe even the commissioner. Quinn was always one for wielding power behind an unassuming, collected nature. He's losing his grip now, though. I'm not an easy kill like Brady, Breck, Lau, and the rest of them. I spot Quinn bolting for the alley where I was. A fire brigade arrives on scene and smothers the flaming building, while the pack of officers scours the scene for bodies and clues. From my vantage point, I can see Quinn's undercover car parked up the street out of the way to avoid detection. These cars carry a myriad of weapons and tools worth more than most of the properties in the surrounding area combined. Stealing one of these is a deadly affair. Each one has a registry code protected fingerprint scanner in the ignition lock system. When the key is turned, the scanner instantly reads the fingers. And if they're not correct, two wires in an auxiliary gas canister go live and destroy the vehicle and everyone in it. I can't steal the car, but I can make sure it never drives again. Quinn passes the back alley in rage and panic and rounds the corner. I head down the fire ladder and run through the alley on the opposite side of Laos. The crews are distracted, and I head up the street to the car. Behind the rear license plate, I find the registry pad and type in the old registry number we used on the force, unchanged after all these years. Doesn't surprise me. I can't add my fingerprints to the registry, but I can take his out. I close up the plate. From my jacket pocket, I pull the photo from the high rise and put it on his windshield. The streetlights are out, probably under Quinn's orders. I pass by several brick, three and four story identical buildings before I find one with a ladder giving me access to the roof. From my position, I see Quinn return to his car. He enters without hesitation, obviously shaken and out of character. Within the next second, he throws himself back out of the car as it's engulfed in flames. Some on the cleanup crew notice the explosion and begin heading his way. He's on his feet already, his desperation approaching madness as he flees the scene away from the car and lows towards me. He turns north on the street just two buildings down from me. I know where he's headed. I could have predicted it, given his nature and present state. Odeo Heights. I've got to keep on him. There's no telling who or where in Odeo he is going, but if he gets away, you can bet he'll collect himself and come looking for me again with redoubled determination. The moon shines bright on the dark roofs, not a cloud in the sky. I find navigating the back alleys easy under the moonlight. The distance from Laos and Midtown to the Odeo Heights delineator is only a few blocks. I parallel Quinn, getting a visual of him every now and then between blocks. Still no lights on the deserted street. Even in the dim moonlight, I know my way around these old brick buildings. We cross Blaze Avenue, the delineator line, and enter Odeo Heights. The shift in scenery is immediately apparent. Old historic brick buildings give way to crumbling structures and boarded up doors. The flow of money to this portion of the city cut off long ago. The street lights are on here, but half of them are burnt out or flickering. This is Quinn's old neighborhood and my old beat. At the next block intersection, I look over and see Quinn stopped on the street corner, hunched over, obviously in pain. Headlights approach from the east side of the intersection. Quinn jumps in the vehicle and they continue north. I didn't have time to ID the driver. I dart over in time to see them turn left at the old school grounds two blocks up. Some sort of meeting, I imagine. The old school grounds are in the possession of the councilman from Odeo, and they often use them for political gatherings. I head toward the school grounds at a dead sprint.